Don't get around, bah. Man, what up, gang? This is Ken Zer, Ken Zilligan, Zika Milligan, the Villain from the Trilligan. We're back on Dongan Rock for Trigger Happy Happy. This is the same day. Actually, if I was recording at like 5 30 something last episode, I'm now recording at 8 50. This is three hours later. And we're already about to get back into Dog and Rafa. So let's uh, let's just get back into Dog and Rafa. What should I say? Okay, time to get started. I need to check anywhere that may be important. From one end to another. One end to the other. Last episode, we found another corpse. We thought Monokuma was dead. We thought the corpse was Monokuma, but Monokuma's alive. And that corpse may be Kyoko. And that's what we're trying to confirm. We're investigating to confirm this. I just need to do what I always do. What you always do, man. Kyoko is helping us out though, man. If I check the body more thoroughly, maybe I'll find out for sure if it's Kyoko or not. Huh? There's something weird about the body's fingernails. Oh, these are fake nails. They're really long. They seem like they'd get in the way of normal activity. Yeah. Huh? I know Kyoko wears a glo wears gloves over her hands, but I don't know if you can wear gloves with nails that long. There's also something on the back of her right hand. Is this a tattoo? It got burned, so I can't make out the whole thing, but it looks like a picture of a dog or something. I've never seen anything like it before. All right. The white jacket the victim was wearing got totally burned up. There's only one little piece left. The upper half of the body got set on fire in the explosion, so it's totally blackened. Also, the top half of the body is wet. Because you threw water on it. That's because it got set on fire and I threw water on it. Since I only threw water on the part that was on fire, the top half, the bottom half is totally dry. In other words, there's nothing strange about the top half being wet. There isn't, right? The lower half of the body didn't get wet at all. After the body blew up, the top half got set on fire, so I dumped a bucket of water on it. Which explains why the bottom half isn't wet. Nothing strange about that, right? All right. No matter when, no matter where, surveillance cameras are always following us. Oh, wait, there is something strange, actually. According, because the sprinklers. So this must have been something recent. If the sprinklers haven't gone off, this must be something that happened recently. This is the panel that controls the sprinklers. They said to turn on at 7.30 every morning. It can't be changed. Hold on. It turned on 7.30 every morning, right? Then if the body was here before then, the sprinkler should have gotten it wet. Which would mean the murder must have taken place after 7.30. Looks like fragments of something. They're all burnt, so I can't be sure, but I feel like I've seen something like it before. But where? Wait, was it there? I have to double check that later. There's a knife laying on the ground. Is this? It must be a knife that was stuck in the body before it exploded. The force of the explosion must have thrown it over here. The Monokuma file said the knife went all the way through the body from front to back. Does that mean this knife is what caused a fatal injury? Either way, this knife. It looks really familiar. Wait, is this? That's it. It's the knife that person was holding. This is getting really weird. There are just too many strange coincidences. Whoever the person in that mask was that attacked me last night, they were holding a knife. That knife. And that same knife was used to stab the same masked attacker we found here. So maybe this masked person got stabbed because... 
When they attacked, I was kind of in a trance. Maybe I reacted by grabbing the knife and maybe then I... No. And if this really is Kyoko, it would mean Kyoko is the one that attacked me. But why the mask? I just don't know. I don't remember anything clearly from last night. No, no, it can't be. There's no way. That's not what happened. Why didn't they feed it to them? The Monokuma flower, huh? Is it true? Does it really eat paper, plastic, and people? Anyway, I don't think it's related to the case. I think I'll stay away from it. Remember, there were chickens in this coop. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, wait, what? Four? Yo. What's going on, Makoto? Oh, I'm glad you're here. Listen, do you remember how many chickens there were in here? Hmm. Of course, there were precisely five. Yeah, right? Huh? What's wrong? There's only four chickens here now. We're one short. Huh? What? Why are you scared? That's so weird. I wonder when it disappeared. But... I was down here just before nighttime last night. There were definitely five chickens then. What? What are we gonna do? Going from five to four is gonna have an impact on the structure of the world. Conspiracy. It's like a jigsaw puzzle. If even a single piece disappears, the whole world will remain unfinished. I did my best to ignore Hero and focus on the problem at hand. Why did one of the chickens disappear? Could it be related to the case? The room is dusty and disorganized. It's staring to the tool shed. Is this a tarp? Wait, was there a tarp in here before? No. I should probably look into that. It could be related to the case. The top is wet and covered with mud and grime. But on the underside, it's totally clean and completely dry. One side of the tarp is wet and dirty. Something about that bothers me. That's the one thing in here that concerns me. Something carved into the crazy diamond. This? Listen, Makoto, do you remember how the body looked, you know, before it blew up? Um, if I remember right, it was wearing some kind of mask and a big white coat. There was a knife sticking out the stomach and it was stained with blood. Apparently the wound had stopped bleeding, but the blood was on the body was still wet. Byakuya said not to touch it to avoid getting all bloody, but for how much blood there was on the body, I didn't see any on the ground around it. Wow, thanks. That was a big help. Now that you explain it, I totally remember how it looked. Well, having to talk about it like that helped me remember it, how, remember it a lot better, too. So thank you, too. Okay. So who does the body belong to? Whoever it is, I'm not gonna look. I don't want to faint anymore. Hmm. It's 11 o'clock right now. Okay, and... Serious. Oh, well, I was just thinking about when we first found the body. When the body was found, huh? I should look back at what I did this morning to help me remember when that was. Monokuma's announcement woke me up at 7 o'clock as usual. And I headed for the dining hall pretty soon. Once I got there, I met up with Hina. That was right around 7.30. Then I headed to the gym where everyone else was waiting. And Toko went to go get the pickaxe. And that's when she found the body. What time was it then? It was like nine on the dot. Just before nine, so it's probably nine on the dot. That's right. It had to have been a right around nine o'clock. You know. Now that you mention it, I think you're right. So I think we can say for sure that the body was found at nine a.m. Okay, my job's done. That's a pretty small job. So the body, huh? 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 Okay. Hmm. Good timing, Makoto. I wanted to talk to you. 
What did you want to talk about? So in other words... I'd like to hear your alibi. Alibi? In other words... Correct. I'd love to hear where you were after nighttime began last night. Um, well, I was sick, so I was asleep all night. Why are you asking me that now? What's nighttime got to do with it? Naturally. Isn't it obvious? This murder took place after nighttime. How can you know that for sure? Hmm. Because just after nighttime began, I came to the garden. I was going around looking for everyone so I could tell them about Monokuma. Hiro's been spending most of the time in the garden the last few days, so I figured he'd be here. And I can confirm that when I arrived last night, there were no body here. In other words... So the murder could have only taken place at some point during nighttime after I left the garden. However, Toko, Hiro, Hina, and I were in the gym together the entire night last night. What? <laughs> Once I found Hiro in the garden, we immediately went to Toko and Hina's room to get them. At that point, we all went to the gym and began dismantling Monokuma. As a precaution, we made sure not to go anywhere alone. We even went to the bathroom in pairs. In other words, all four of us have airtight alibis. The only ones who don't have alibis are me and- Oh, my fault. The only ones who don't have alibis are me and Kyoko. That's right. And if the victim really is Kyoko, then I'm the only one without an alibi. Hmm. Also, when we went to go get Hina and Toko, we stopped by your room as well. Wow. But you never came to the door. So where precisely were you? I'm telling the truth. I was in my room, but I was dead asleep. I had a fever. <laughs> That's hardly an alibi. I know. <laughs> so, what now? You seem to be at quite the disadvantage here. I'm the only one without an alibi. That's really bad, isn't it? Oh my goodness. I think I've checked everything I need to check in this area, but I'm not done yet. Specifically that fragment I found before, there's somewhere I need to go in order to conform my suspicions. I still need to find out more about Kyoko. Is that corpse really Kyoko? If that's true... Was that also Kyoko who attacked me last night? If I can find out more about her, then maybe I can answer that question. Kyoko was never the kind of person to talk about herself all that much. Maybe if I can get in her room, I'll be able to find out more. But the key to her room... It's all clear now. I will simply limit your options. I can't allow you to engage in further suspicious activity. What? Limit my options. Just give up. Give me the key to your room. I don't have a choice. I have to see if he'll let me borrow her room key. Hey, uh, Byakuya. Hmm. If you do come up with an alibi, I'll be happy to hear it later at the class trial. Oh no, it's not about that. You have the key to Kyoko's room, right? I was hoping I could borrow it. I'm afraid I can't take that risk. You're the prime suspect after all. What? Of course, if I were to go with you, that would be a different story. Then will you go with me? Hmm. Sorry, I have my own agenda to take care of. Find me again later and we'll see. Goodbye. Depending on my mood, I may go with you or I may not. Come back later, huh? Okay. In the meantime, I should look around somewhere else. Maybe I should check out that one area. I think he's talking about, um... Is he talking about the secret room? I, have, I really have no clue what he's talking about, so I'm gonna assume it's a... I'm gonna assume it's a secret room. The gym? Why would you have... Why would you call the gym that one place? That's just unnecessarily confusing. Monokuma's laying on the floor. I figured it wouldn't be here. You know? I just found something. Uh, what is it? It's... Huh? It's what? Hm. A bomb. There's one instilled in every Monokuma robot, I'm sure. A bomb? Yeah, he took the bomb. And that bomb went missing. No doubt about it. The fragments I found in the garden. Fragments near the dead body. Yeah, it was from the bomb. Okay, I've got everything else I can think of. All that's left now is Kyoko's room. Let's head back to the garden and find Byakuya. Then you can go soon, Byakuya? Let's go. You wanted to check out Kyoko's room, right? Very well, let's go. Ah, oh, wait for me! Byakuya walked off without a second glance and I hurried after him on the way to the dorms. Hmm. 
<laughs> well then, here we go. Yakuya took out the can, slid it into the keyhole, and then... And it's open. Looks like it, thanks. So, this is Kyoko's room. Here's the bathroom. She might have certain articles hanging out to dry. I better not look inside. What? You wanted to come here, right? What is it you're looking for? Nothing in particular. I just thought we might find some kind of clue here. Clue that might help us understand come Kyoko. On. You can't be serious. That's why you made me take time to out of my take time out of my search to come here. Sorry. Regardless, if you plan on poking around at random, you're doomed no matter how much time you take. Surely you have something more concrete. Something to give us some sort of direction here. More concrete. Oh, I know! Earlier, Kyoko gave me something. Huh? What's this? It's true. Consider it a symbol of my determination. Don't open it yet. Only open it if something ever happens to me. I'm sure I have it here somewhere. Found it! What's in the envelope? Kyoko gave it to me. She said if something ever happens, I should open it. Hmm. Well, something has certainly happened, so open it. Alright. I opened the envelope and looked inside. Inside was a single piece of paper. Under the sheets. What? That's all that was in there? Yeah, it looks like it. Under the sheets, what could it be? But could something be hidden under the bed sheets? Part of me didn't expect to find anything, but as I lifted up the sheets... What's this? I found a crumpled up piece of paper. Class 78, student registry. Makuro Ikusaba. I see. It appears to be Makuro Ikusaba's profile. Yeah, it looks like it. That's probably the other thing Kyoko stole when she snuck into the headmaster's room along with the key. You're so annoying. I'll tell you, stole a key and uh, blah, blah, blah. That's it. That must be the blink that Monokuma was talking about. Kyoko said a death without meaning was unappealing, and this is what she left behind. Hmm. I don't have time for your sentimental indulge indulgences. Hurry up and finish your search. All right. I made an effort to pull myself together, then looked down at the profile sheet. Name, Makuru Ikusaba. Sex female. The ultimate soldier. Although small for her age, she was a military specialist trained in every weapon type imaginable. She showed an interest in the military from childhood and soon found herself completely absorbed in it. In elementary school, she won a survival game tournament and began writing for military magazines. Just before entering middle school, while she and her family were on vacation in Europe, she disappeared. The story of a young Japanese girl being kidnapped quickly took over Japanese media outlets. An intense international investigation turned up no information and she was never found. However, she reappeared in Japan three years later alone and completely unannounced. She revealed that she had joined a mercenary group known as Fenrir for those three years. She insisted that she hadn't been kidnapped that she'd received battle training of her own volition. However, she never revealed why she decided to return home when she did. The ultimate soldier, a mercenary group. This doesn't feel real. The world I grew up in is like a completely different dimension. It's like one's non-fiction and the other is sci-fi. There's no way to even compare the two. It's how different this is. That was how I saw things as just an ordinary person, but then I never imagined I would hear the name Fenrir in a place like this. Huh? You recognize it? Naturally. The Fenrir Mercenary Corps is a collection of battle-crazed warmongers. But they do have their uses, and they always get the job done. That's worth remembering. Then this is all a part of a world I'm totally removed from the one I live in. Hmm. I have to say I'm intrigued. Every room I've heard says Fimrir is already. Found it. Whoa, I feel like our hero is becoming a bit player, and a bit player is becoming our hero. Ah, it's you. Wah -wah? Hmm, what have you got in your pretty little hand there? What? Ah, you found her profile? So what if we did? Hey! Don't freak out on me! I'm not gonna hold it against you or anything! And in case you were wondering, I don't hold it against Kyoko either! 
Even though she stole it and hit it. After all, there's no rule against stealing, is there? But who I can't forgive is Miss Ogami, who broke the rules and busted into the headmaster's room. Maybe I'll drag her corpse out here and slice it and devour it. Bears are omnivorous, you know. What? Are rule violations really so unforgivable? You're quite adamant about those regulations of yours. Hmm. Of course I am. A proper school life is built on the dedication to organization and order. Which is why I, as the school headmaster, have to follow the regulations myself. Oh? So you're saying you have to follow your own regulations then? Of course! Absolutely! I can't have you complaining about how unfair it all is, now can I? Hmm. In fact, on the subject of fairness, would you like to know something interesting? Interesting. <laughs> it's all about the one writing the rules. They're actually one of the participants in this killing game. I don't think I ever actually told you how many participants there actually were, did I? Hmm. I was thinking I should probably clarify that. Hey, um... When you all first got together in the main hall, back when... Well, hall back... Way back when... Ah! When you first got together in the main hall way back when, there were 15 people there, right? I think that first meeting may have led to a little misunderstanding among you all. A misunderstanding? Are you saying? In other words... That's right! There weren't actually 15 of you. Yes, indeed. The total number of students taking part in this killing game was actually 16. 16? Then... Mukuro Ikusaba, the 16th student, lying hidden somewhere in this school. The one they call the ultimate despair. Watch out for her. The 16th student, Mukuro Ikusaba. She's part of this school life. So the one making all the regulations is... Why? Huh? huh? Did you say something? <laughs> Why are you telling us this? Hmm. Oh, well, because... Like I told you, this killing game is desperately possible. You wouldn't believe the ratings. And since we've got so many viewers now, I wanted to make sure everyone was on the same page. I don't want to wake up to a hurricane of complaints and hate mail, you know? Yes, indeed. Makes sense? Well, now. Okay, that's all you get for now. Oh, actually, I do have some revenge to get, so I have an extra bonus for you. Revenge. <laughs> I want to get back at that sneaky Miss Kirigiri, so I'm going to share a little secret with you. Seriously? Hey, um... You know how she wears those stupid gloves day in, day out all the time? Well, don't actually tell anyone I told you, but... <laughs> She wears them to cover up a bunch of hideous scars that she doesn't want anyone to see. <gasps> then that body is a Kyoko! What? <laughs> okay, now that's all you get. <laughs> Kyoko wears those gloves to cover up a bunch of scars. Wait, so on the back of her hand... I didn't... I, yeah, I know the tattoo. But I didn't see any, I don't see any, like, scars. I mean, yeah, there are scars, but they look like explosion scars, you know? The tattoo. Wait, but no. Monokuma specifically said they were scars, right? And that's why Kyoko wears those gloves to hide the scars? Which means... Those fake nails on the corpse. Hmm. Are you thinking about Kyoko again? Huh? What? Forget about her. What matters right now is uncovering Monokuma's trap. His trap? Such ignorance. God must have really hated you to make you so dull. Hm. Don't you remember what Monokuma just told us? He said there were 16 students, right? Which means Mukuro was a student here. That's right. Obviously. Monokuma was trying to tell us that Mukuro was the one creating the rules of the game. But why would he tell us that and why now? said he wanted to make things clear so there wouldn't be any complaints later. But the mere fact he said that proves that Mukuro is connected to this case. That's why Monokuma revealed the existence of a 16th student. He needs to make our investigation fair. Mukuro is related to the case? It's certainly possible. Perhaps she's the one who killed Kyoko. What? Hmm. That would explain why we have why we have a class trial, wouldn't it? If she's a student and she killed someone, that would make her part of the school killing game. Mukuro is the killer. She killed Kyoko. Hmm.
Anyone should be able to come to that conclusion, don't you think? In fact, that's exactly what I thought when the investigation first began. What? But based on what Monokuma just told us, I've changed my mind. It's all clear now. Mukuru Ikusaba is not the killer. What makes you say that? Hmm. We thought Mukuro, the ultimate despair, was the mastermind's true identity. But if that's true, Monokuma's behavior makes no sense. Why would the mastermind go out of the way to reveal themselves to us? That's a good point. So in other words... Mukuro giving us information that would raise questions about her would be bold, to say the least. It makes more sense then to assume Mukuro isn't the culprit. So that's the trap. They want us to suspect Mukuro and then come to the wrong conclusion. Hmm. That's what makes sense to me. The way you say it, it definitely seems possible. But if that's really true, if Mukuro isn't the killer, then who is? There's something on the table. It's a woodblock decoration. What? What's that? What purpose does it serve? I think it's probably a key. The lockers at those traditional public bathhouses have them for their lockers. What? Have them for their lockers. I wouldn't know. I've never gone to a public bathhouse. That doesn't really surprise me. It's hard to picture Byaku you're doing something it's like that. Certainly possible. But if it is a key, I think I might know what it unlocks. Really what? Hmm. Unless I'm mistaken. I'm pretty sure I saw something in the dojo that this might go to. The dojo. Hmm. Well then, I believe our work here is finished. Let's move on. I'm sure there's other places in need of investigation. I should find out if that key and dojo really are connected. Let's go. Well, are you coming? There are wooden lockers here. They use wood block keys, just like this, those super traditional public bathhouses. Looks like the key we find in Kyoko's room really does go to one of these lockers. I see. Makoto, do you find the locker farther to the? Do you see the locker farther to the right? Very strange. That's the only one that doesn't have a key in it at the moment. You understand what that means, right? I should probably use the key we found on that locker, right? That's right. Well, just try it. Okay. Took out the woodblock key and inserted it. I said the locker's not a lock. And the locker eagerly accepted the key and it opened. There are arrows in here. It looks like 10 arrows in total. Hmm. They look like they were made of titanium, which means they're quite strong despite how thin they are. Of course, without a bow, they're nothing but strong little sticks. Strong sticks. Oh, there's something else inside the locker. It's a wadded up ball of duct tape. I wonder what this was used for. Is that a blood stain? I see. If that's what it is, if it is, that means it must surely be related to the case. This duct tape is related to the case somehow, but how could it possibly be involved? I think that's all the locker has to offer for now. Is something wrong? Very strange. It's very odd, don't you think? The locker was hiding items that were clearly related to the case. But how did the key to the locker wind up in the victim's room? Why? Or perhaps... Yaku, hmm. forget it. Come on, we need to continue on to the next location. Huh? What next location? What? There's still something we need to look into. We need to do more research on Fenrir. You mean the mercenary group Mukuro was a part of? How are we supposed to find out about that? The library? <laughs> Isn't it obvious? Where in this school would you go to do research on something? Research. The archive, yes. Oh, that's right. The archive has all kinds of info general public doesn't have access to. Let's go. We only have so much time before the trial begins. Let's hurry. I believe there was a file related to Fenrir somewhere over here. Yakuya seems to know the archive like the back of his hand and went straight to the shelf in the back. Hmm. 
Ah, here we go. He quickly returned with the file in hand. I see. Take a look at this. I have no idea what it says. What language is this? How did you make it up? How did you make it all the way to high school without learning a single word of French? I'm, I'm pretty sure most high schoolers can't speak French. Well, whatever. I'll read it for you. But I expect you to repay your debt a hundred times over. A hundred times? That's kind of extreme. Finrear is an elite fighting group based out in the Middle East. Unlike military contractors, they are a fierce group of soldiers who engage in, who engage in direct combat. They claim that a single member is equivalent to, the, to an entire company of regular soldiers. Just like Fenrir, the Wolf of Ragnarok, their mere presence is enough to strike fear into the enemy. They have been involved in countless military battles and operations, most of which are highly classified. However, some time ago, they completely ceased all activity. At present, their continued existence cannot be confirmed. They are unconfirmed. There are unconfirmed reports that the key members of the group were all neutralized. Rumors indicate they were killed to keep them from revealing the many state secrets they'd acquired. Some, however, believe there was, there was mounting internal tension within the group and they simply imploded. What? What is it? This all just sounds like some kind of alternate reality. Hmm. Well, it isn't. This is our reality. The only reality. These people are a part of our world. Their battlefields aren't much different from our lives here. An unpredictable, unimaginable world. <laughs> That's what makes it all so exciting. Exciting definitely isn't the word I'd use. So, did anything jump out at you? This may be your last opportunity to learn about Fenrir. Now that you mention it. The report says something about when their name Fenrir comes from, right? <laughs> That's right. It said Fenrir is the Wolf of Ragnarok. Speaking of which, would you like to know something interesting relating to that? To show that they're a member of, member of the team, each soldier that joins the squad, or to get a tattoo representing Fenrir somewhere on their body. What? They got a tattoo of Fenrir. Could that mean? Already? What? Time is utterly silent, and yet it constantly assaults us. Organisms, the earth, natural phenomena. It damages us little by little until the end. You should really think about that. Anyway, it's time to begin the class trial. So, please meet up in the usual spot. <laughs> See you later. What? Hmm. Then the time has come. All we can do now is try to uncover the truth during the That's class right. trial. It would seem that way. Let's go. Oh my goodness. Uh, what the heck? Don't do that, Louis.